Welcome to Money Matters TV. My name is Paul Mitchell. I'm a commercial banker. I'm your host for today's show. Joining me is Jim McGrory, who's a shareholder at Drucker and Schicchetti. Nice to see you, Paul. Consulting accounting firm specializing in taxes. Jim is a shareholder there and uh, has been studying a lot of a lot of what the new tax things mean to us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to focus this show on what uh, particular you know tax consequences on, on businesses based upon some, some recent changes. So, so Jim, I understand you spent a lot of time studying up on that little thin uh, five-page uh, tax code uh, revision? Or, I'm, uh, I'm telling you, Paul, <laughs> it is, it's uh, President Trump's Christmas gift to, to everyone yeah. uh, was, was passed on December 22nd. Uh -huh. And uh, accountants across the nation, we've all, yeah. we've all been trying to get our arms around uh -huh. all of the changes sure. um, in, in, the, in the act. Yeah. Um, there were, uh, it, it's, it, it's amazing just that, that um, the act itself, I think, was geared to have, you know, really have tax reduction for businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, it, that, that's how it was developed. But I think the individuals, in order to get it passed, mm -hmm. a lot, whole lot of other provisions were sure. put in. Yeah. Um, so it turned out to be um, the largest tax changes since 1986. Yeah, that's a long time. Well, yeah. I certainly read about that uh, some businesses uh, said, here's a th every employee, here's a thousand dollar bonus because we're going to save on taxes. So yep. uh, yeah. a little sort of trickle down, uh, at least some, some degree there. Exactly. So they were, uh, I would say that some of the major changes that impacted businesses, first and foremost, the, uh, the corporate rate um, on mm -hmm. C corporations was okay. reduced from 35 percent to 21 percent. Yeah. That is a that was a major change. Wow. Um, a second change was that pass through businesses mm -hmm. are now going to be uh, have a certain ones going to have a twenty percent qualified business income deduction, uh, which is which again is a massive tax mm -hmm. change. Now C corporations tend to be more like generally speaking larger corporations, and some of these pass through entities tend to be smaller companies, more entrepreneurial. Uh, I would say that that that. Uh, C corporations typically, Paul, are corporations that want to retain profits. Mm -hmm. They uh, they want to make investments. Have in shareholders, it, it, bunch of shareholders. They'll have a bunch of shareholders, yeah. but the, the 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 goal really is to retain profits mm -hmm. in the in the company. They want to make investments in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. They want to uh, in and technology, uh, people, um, marketing. So the 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 best type of corporate company that that wants for that is a C corporation. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they, they give dividends, but not that much. Small, smaller businesses or pass-through businesses, um, they're owned by individuals or families mm -hmm. or any, any number of shareholders. So you could have very large businesses as, as pass-through entities, but the goal there is to pass out the profits to, to the shareholders. Uh -huh. right. yeah. um, not only the profits, but not necessarily the, the cash itself, but certainly, these, certainly the income tax benefit is taxed on the individual level. The income tax benefit is, is, is at the individual, but right. the cash, oftentimes the cash comes out as well. well okay. So um, for instance, um, a, a, the shareholders will get their income reported on what is called a Schedule K-1, and all of the income that it's, the company doesn't pay income tax, mm -hmm. the shareholders do. Mm -hmm. And so many times the company will give them tax distributions okay. so that they could pay their taxes. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Who wants to get income and, and pay taxes and on it, but not any cash. And not any cash, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Tough. So what are some of the most significant changes in the new tax law that you think will impact your business clients? So I, I mentioned the, the, the C-Corp uh, change yeah. the, in, in the, the tax rate. The 20% qualified business income mm -hmm. deduction is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, we'll talk, we can talk about that a little bit more sure. later. Um, I would say the 179 deduction, which basically is a deduction, uh, section 179, when you buy equipment, you mm -hmm. can completely write it off. Nice. Um, that has been increased from five hundred thousand to a million dollars. Wow. Um, so you can imagine um, people going out and buying machinery, mm -hmm. um, furniture, equipment. Yeah. It, it all can be written off. And a few years ago, it would be written off uh, over what five, seven years. It could be like five that? or seven years. Now it's immediate. Wow. Um, There's an incentive. It's, it's that, huge. Yeah. It's incentive, huge. Yeah. Um, and it. The whole goal was um, of, of these types of incentives are to invest um, in in our our economy. Mm -hmm. So to get ma factories going, making machinery, cars, 
things that could, any, anything that that can keep American jobs. I mean, that by computers and servers. I mean, computers technology, and servers. but that's right. that's widgets right. too and stuff. Yep. So um, I mean, that that was this law was called the American Jobs and Tax mm -hmm. Act. Um, so that that the Tax Cuts Act. So it, it's it's trying to create American jobs. That's yeah. the that's yeah. the, uh, the 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 emphasis behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, bonus depreciation is another, it's, it's almost the, the stepsister to um, Section 179. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, you can write off 100% of, of equipment on that too. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was another large increase. Yeah. So w let's just give an example. Let's say a uh, small business buys $100,000 worth of equipment. With this new uh, tax change, what does that boil down to them in, in dollars of um, I, I guess they're better off so many dollars than they would have been a year right. or two ago. How many, how many dollars would that S amount to? So uh, if they bought $100,000 equipment in the past, they would have to, um, well, with, with they would have been, the, the 179 deduction and uh, has been around for a, a, a while, but that was capped at 500000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that's been increased to a million. Okay, so, so it's almost if somebody bought a million dollars of equipment. Example. Right. Sorry. So if they bought a million dollars of uh -huh. equipment um, before, you would have you would maybe be able to write off half a million. Mm -hmm. So now I have another half a million left. So if you write off half a million and you pay a tax rate before of? 35% Okay. as a C corporation. Right. Um, individuals, and we'll talk a little mm -hmm. bit about more, individuals the highest rate was 39.6. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you would, um, you can imagine, I mean you run the math, it's it's a substantial substantial mm -hmm. tax mm -hmm. reduction. Mm -hmm. I'm talking tens, at least tens of thousands of dollars yeah. if, if, if yeah. not more. Yeah. Do you see many of your clients opting to then to, uh, to go the C corporation route? Not the tax I, rate is twenty one percent. I think it's a good question, and and Paul, I think it's it's after the the act was passed, I think there was a lot you saw on the internet um, and people talking about changing changing their status, whether they were an income they were an S corporation now mm -hmm. or a partnership now. They they were saying, like, look, I'm going to get a twenty one percent rate as a C corp, you know, like and and you know, it was almost like this. You know, like like almost this thought, like we're going to rush to become C corporation. Sure. I, you know, as I mentioned before, a C corporation is a, is a good type of business where you want to retain profits. If you want to distribute profits mm -hmm. and distribute cash to your shareholders, there's there's a double tax, if you will, in mm -hmm. a C corporation environment. The C corporation, you pay tax at the at the C corporation mm -hmm. level, and then when you make a dividend, the the shareholder picks yeah. it up as well. Yeah. So not only it's not you're not paying just twenty one percent. When mm -hmm. you look at the, the the corporate rate and the individual rate, you're looking at a combined rate of about thirty two percent. So it's it's not the panacea that 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 people think it is. Yeah, yeah. So do all business owners benefit from the new twenty percent pass through deductions? So that th uh, that was a major change. The twenty percent qualified business income deduction. Mm -hmm. um, typically. Um, it, you would think that um, every pass-through would qualify. The problem is there's a lot of exceptions to that, mm. and and that's what made um, that's what made it, it that, that law so complicated. And we're still trying to figure out what's going on with so it. So was the, with it, was it because the law was written in a certain way that made it complicated, or just the concept itself? The law was written very fast. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of holes, uh. and there's a lot of technical explanations that haven't been issued yet. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing so far, and what we know is that there is a certain level of income that if you're under, you will, and you're a pass-through entity, you'll qualify for the deduction. If you're over that level of income, it depends. And really, mm -hmm. it depends on all things tax. So it matters if you um, have, in certain s situations, if you're not a service business. So if, if you're a service business, um, accounting, law. Accounting, that's your business. Exactly, financial services. Mm -hmm. Um, bank, medical bank. field, um, not so much banks, may, but maybe um, real, real investment investor, advisors, real, real estate investment type thing. Uh, real estate is going to, be, I think, is going to be one of the ones that do qualify, mm -hmm. but more uh, financing it's, companies. Okay, right. um, so there's a list of these businesses mm -hmm. that are co considered their um, their qu service businesses, mm -hmm. and if you are in that list and your income is above those mm -hmm. limits, then you won't get the deduction. And do they determine uh, how you qualify to be this type of service company by your SIC code? Is that how they do it, or you just 
I mean, uh, I could say I'm a yeah. such and such right. company, and the IRS thinks, well, I'm, you know, you're really a such and such. Well, Does that happen? That's the problem. The guidance hasn't been issued yet. Hmm. Um, so they're, they're, uh, we're still waiting for it wow. as, as far as mm -hmm. what, what, what qualifies and what doesn't qualify. Um, one of the, the caveats is um, companies that, that basically it's their skill and reputation mm -hmm. of the owners and employees mm -hmm. th that they, they would not be considered, um, if you're, again, if you're over the income limits to qualify for the deduction. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we have a question from one of our viewers, and I think it's right up your, your alley, uh, Jim. The question from Martin Small of Philadelphia is, are there any changes in the new tax law as to the AMT, the alternative minimum tax? So y there are. Um, on the corporate side, the corporate alternative minimum tax has been repealed. Um, so C, C corporations don't have to worry about the alternative minimum mm -hmm. tax anymore. From the individual side, um, the, in the alternative minimum tax was, was on uh, everyone's mind. It's like they would uh, be, be worried about being subject yeah. to it. Um, because of the, the, some of the tax law changes, the exemptions and the phase-out amounts have been increased so highly um, on the individual alternative minimum yeah. tax that it's almost a, mo a moot point anymore. Um, it's only going to be certain rare cases that you'll see mm -hmm. someone being subject to the alternative minimum tax. Okay. Is it mostly uh, an income level? Like if I make over a million dollars, I'm more likely to be subject to it than if I make $160,000? It, it, it's a good, that's a good question, Paul. It's not so much the level of income as much as the deductions and preferences and other items mm -hmm. that would not be allowable for the alternative minimum tax. Sounds like more complexity. Another reason that our viewers should be seeking professional advice from uh, people that spend all, all day long in this, in this business. Absolutely. If other viewers would like to submit a question to Money Matters, here's how you can do it. You can have your questions answered on Money Matters. Please go to our website, money-matters-tv.com. On our homepage, click on the banner on the right that says, Send Us Your Questions. While you're on our website, you can find information about our hosts and guests, as well as show notes and links about this show and past shows. Money Matters is also available as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can listen to Money Matters while you're on the go. That website address, again, is money, M-O-N-E-Y, dash matters, M-A-T-T-E-R-S, T-V dot com. Continuing our discussion on taxes, we've just been talking a lot, a lot about the, the business aspects of some of these tax changes. Obviously, there are also a lot of individual well, it is taxes affect the, in, the individual, like you and me and, and Jim and, and, and a lot of, most of the viewers there. Uh, Jim, could you give us some, maybe some highlights on some, some of those uh, changes? Some of the major changes that impact individuals, um, and, and again, this is what we're, we're, we're seeing the most of, there has been a change um, in the top tax rate for individuals. It's dropped from 39.6% mm -hmm. to 37%. Um, there also has been the, as that's not much. It's it's At least my first uh, reaction. <laughs> it's the, well, the top tax rate um, it, it impacts individuals now um, at, a, at over five hundred thousand dollars of income, mm -hmm. and for married filing joint couples, um, six hundred thousand dollars of taxable income. So when you're talking a couple percentages, that's mm, okay. it, it could be a, mm. a significant change. Um, the alternative minimum tax changes that we talked about before yes. about um, the exemptions and the phase out. So. We're not going to see much of a, a individual AMT, even though it still is mm -hmm. e exists, um, is, is not going to uh, impact many people. Um, third thing is the itemized deductions. Um, the state and local taxes and the real estate tax deduction mm -hmm. yeah. is going to be capped at $10,000. Mm. Um, that has a lot of people in high tax states very upset. Sure, sure. Um, we live in Pennsylvania. Um, uh, my clients in New York, New Jersey, mm. Delaware, they're very upset that they can't um, deduct any of their uh, taxes above $10,000. Yeah, yeah. um, miscellaneous itemized deductions, they've been eliminated. Mm -hmm. um, so mm. again, so tax, prep, tax preparation fees, oh. investment advisory fees, 
they're all not al they're not allowable now. How about the driving around fees, uh, the mileage thing for uh, medical or charitable purposes or well, charitable purposes. So charitable contribution job. deduction is still mm -hmm. uh, is still in play. Um, but unreimbursed employee business expenses, yeah. mm -hmm. which would be if you're driving for your for your job right. or if you're incurring costs, um, union dues, things of that nature, mm -hmm. they're they're all they're all Uni disallowed. Um, uniforms. Disallowed. It's, it's, it's all. Wow. Yeah, it's all. Uh, all the miscellaneous itemized deductions mm -hmm. are are gone. How about um, that? The 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 business changes, and that and this was a big difference between the, the the business side and the individual side. The business side is they were permanent changes, mm -hmm. where the individual changes are only temporary. Oh, so yeah. most of them are are set to expire after twenty twenty five, and then mm -hmm. in twenty twenty six we're going to all revert to the rules that we had. Wow. For two thousand seventeen. So, so maybe there could be more changes uh, between, between now, now and then, and exactly. maybe they'll last longer. But um, yep, yeah, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't so. have a crystal ball. <laughs> well, we only know the the rules right now, yeah. and yeah. the rules right now are are, are faced with that. Um, yeah. Individuals get to see a an increase of the child tax credit. That's going mm -hmm. from one thousand to two thousand okay. dollars. Um, and the uh, phase outs again have been increased on that. So. A lot of a lot more people are going to see the child tax credit than, mm -hmm. than had seen it in the past couple of years. So, do you think people are going to have more children? More children take advantage of that. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> their, their bottom line is they're still going to be spending a lot more money. They're spending more. a lot more money. <laughs> exactly. All that you got it. Uh, yeah, education issues Oof, and everything else. Sure, sure, so. sure. In light of the new tax law going forward, what can be done to minimize some of the negative aspects of this new law? So, it's a good question, Paul. The with and you. <clears throat> if if you recall, um, well, itemized deductions there's 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 been changes. So uh, the state and local deduction has been capped to ten. Mm -hmm. The standard deduction, on the other on the other hand, has been increased. So the standard deduction for individuals is now twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and married filing jointly is twenty four thousand. So a lot more people are are not going to be itemizing anymore because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're going to say, well, I got twenty four. If I'm married, I got twenty four thousand dollars to yeah, play with. Sure, I'm not going to worry about making charitable. Well, a lot of people they maybe make charitable contributions for mm -hmm. tax reasons. Right, right. Well. If they're if they're not going to get a tax yeah, benefit yeah. for it, so the uh, to get around or to to people who do give charitable contributions, there's a there's a strategy where you bunch deductions. Um, so in any given year, where you try to get over that twenty four thousand dollar hurdle, um, so that you'll give maybe mm. double okay. in one year, yeah, yeah. and you'll be over twenty four, and then the next year you'll take the twenty four. Yeah. Do you have you got any feedback from from your clients whether or not that's going to impact their in willingness, interest, amount of, of charitable deductions, uh, <coughs> the motivation, they're, they're not as motivated as it would have been a year or two ago? There, there are certain clients that regardless of the tax laws, they're very philanthropically inclined mm -hmm. and they will, they will make charitable contributions. Okay. There, there, is, there is a segment of the population that they're, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll, they'll think twice like about giving, maybe they were going to give $200, mm -hmm. well maybe they'll give $100. Or these these uh, charitable organizations that advertise, uh, give us donate your car, donate your boat, donate right. your yeah. whatever. If it's not if, if 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 it's harder to get, or they don't they're not getting a, a charitable contribution deduction, yeah. you can see. And I think a lot of charities are worried mm -hmm. um, about the impact of the new tax law. Sure, sure. Yeah. That's that's a shame. That's yeah. a shame. Is there anything else that the, the listeners need to know about the current or future filing seasons? Well, the the IRS just recently they they they've been giving a lot of publication about something they call the Dirty Dozen, um, and it is uh, like a movie. It sounds like a movie, but there's been a lot of press about um, identity theft and mm -hmm. uh, filing of false tax returns by by these scam scam artists, um, phishing schemes where people are, they're they're getting their uh, it looks like an a, an email from the IRS. Sure. So uh, the IRS is really recommending that 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 individuals and and businesses be very very savvy mm -hmm. and and uh, be very very careful with um, their their identity and right, uh, right. their emails. Yeah. Um, the Sounds like something else that since again you're in this business all the time. Yeah. Me and uh, people and maybe most a lot of our viewers don't spend that much time in it. You know, they get something in an email that looks pretty official and yep. some of these things look more official than they did five years ago. The spelling's yep. gotten better, you know, yep. they don't all say they yep. come from some uh, strange sounding country. Yep. Um, maybe if you get us an email and you're questioning it, um, 
Call the professional advisor again. You have to, uh, yeah, uh, I call, first I would call your IT person okay. if, if you can, and you know, if you have one in, 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 in if you're in a business. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, uh, any emails uh, that look suspicious, delete them as soon as yeah. you can. Yeah. Um, and um, another thing, the IRS will never call you and demand money. Mm -hmm. um, hang up right away. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had several clients that, that get phone calls like wow. that. Um, another uh, thing you, you hear read a lot about is like cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the IRS again has issued uh, notices out there that income from Bitcoin is taxable. Uh, so wow. and 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 uh, they expect it to be reported. Mm -hmm. So that that's huge. Um, that that uh, uh, but a lot of people have been trying to to skirt that issue. Yeah, and the people that uh, I'll call it my own language that run cryptocurrencies. They're not filing reports with the IRS like uh, other organizations have to in terms of if there's a transaction occurs, a file a form has to be filed. Um, yep. You know, uh, yep. gain on a sale of, of some stock or bond, right. or yep. maybe even artwork or, or things like that. Yep. yep. They're not. They're not subject to. Uh, they're not subject to. And, and just whoever they you, are exactly. And just because you don't get a 1099 doesn't mean it's not reportable. It's absolutely reportable. Yeah. Um, the the other. The other thing that, that at this time of year with tax time um, is people maybe not, don't have enough time to file their taxes. So mm -hmm. um, we highly strongly recommend that you file for an extension. Um, mm -hmm. And even if you don't have to pay, you, you can't pay, still file for an extension anyway because the penalties mm -hmm. for non-filing okay. are, are substantial. And you're supposed to pay or write them a check regardless. Yeah and then go through the effort of filing the correct tax return with the extension, but you're suggesting regardless. Regardless. Even if you can't pay, pay. just get that Get the extension filed. in, right. Because it's 5% a month penalty mm. uh, of the tax you have to do, uh, wow. you have to pay a month. So um, that's Six, substantial. That's 60% a year. Well, it, it it's caps out at 25%, oh, okay. but it's still substantial. Such a deal. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah. As, a, as a penalty. Yeah. Wow. That's brutal. Yeah. True. So, uh, what what are your um, your clients th thinking about the the strength of the economy these days, with the, well, these improved you know tax situations and that type of thing? Are they trying to maximize everything they can and uh, hire more people and buy more equipment and believe uh, that everything's going to be bright for the next bunch of years? Or I I, th I think Paul, it's a l it's it's a little soon right now. Um, I think that the, the dust needs to settle um, on the the tax law and. Um, I think they, they haven't seen the benefits yet. Um, I think right now everything's theoretical. I'm mm -hmm. um, like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a reduced tax rate. Yeah. Or yeah, I may get a 20% deduction. Or I may not. Again, uh, we, we're still waiting. I think it will, we're, we're a couple months out to, to, for more guidance on what businesses actually do qualify mm -hmm. um, for the 20% deduction. Um, I think in, in, in a, give it time and when they start seeing those refund checks, Mm -hmm. um, I, I think business owners will be a little um, more aggressive and less cautious about mm -hmm. making investments. Right, right. Yeah. So even in the meantime, you as a professional advisor really don't have enough information to say this is what we think you should do. We 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 have some we have some um, some information to work mm -hmm. from, um, but we're going to guide our clients along the process. Mm -hmm. um, a, again, there there's some clear cut. Um, rules that we do know, yeah. like for instance, the, the section 179 deduction. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, you're gonna buy equipment, right. Let, let's write it off. Um, so don't, you, you, it's almost guaranteed now. You, you've mm -hmm. got okay. it, you, you've got well, that's it. That's good, so, yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah. So do you have many um, manufacturers as clients? I have, um, my firm does. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have uh, several manufacturing clients. Um, in in the in the Philadelphia area, I always like to hear it because there's so yeah. much talk about you know manufacturing in the U.S. And, you know is, is dead or is dying or something like that. Yeah. And I uh, mean, you know, as as a banker, you know, I like to finance some um, uh, you know manufacturing companies. Yeah. And I still see the you know very interesting ones that are you know, niche niche oriented. Right. In particular. Yep. yep. Yeah, uh, and th that is one of the downsides of the new tax law is their manufacturers had gotten. Un under previous law at, at something called the domestic manufacturing deduction. And in 2017, that was basically a deduction up to 9% nine, 9 of your manufacturing activities. So mm -hmm. that unfortunately was one of the, the things that yeah, had gone okay. away. Yeah. 
The other side of that is I th w very likely that the manufacturing companies will qualify for the 20% mm -hmm. deduction. Mm -hmm. So okay, they, they gave up nine to get yeah. a different deduction of 20. <laughs> okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Jim, if our viewers wanted to contact you or, or your firm, uh, how would they do that? Uh, would, did you have an email address they could uh, send something to or look up uh, something on the, the internet? Uh, I know it's Drucker and Schicchetti, yeah. but you know, how do you spell that? How do you, how, what's the phone number? What's the uh, what's oh, what's, what's, what's uh, no. dot com address? So we, have, um, we are the largest, um, I would say, tax accounting firm in, in Philadelphia. Wow. Um, and thankfully, years ago, uh, the, uh, the firm had the vision to uh, capitalize on um, our, 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 our you, you would say, domain name. So it's, mm -hmm. um, it, our website is www.taxwarriors.com. Mm -hmm. ah, warriors, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I, I, you don't, we wear, you, don't wear, you don't wear costumes or anything, we do you? Get, no, no, we <laughs> okay. get great feedback on that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That's, yeah. uh, Stick, something that st sticks in your mind. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, Jim, it's been a real pleasure uh, you know, chatting with you about the, the tax laws and the updates and that type of thing. You certainly uh, seem very well versed in, in, the, uh, in that information and uh, I think it provides a real benefit for, for our viewers. Oh, thank you, Paul, thank you. So, to our viewers, this uh, ends our show and I just want you to remind you that um, on this show, your money matters.